All right. And before we jump into the individual uh, capabilities, I want to take 30 seconds, you know, set the stage and emphasize the out of the box capabilities that are auto generated within LDQ um, in a matter of minutes as we scan the data. So on the screen, we can see uh, various tabs across this panel. We see behaviors, outliers, schema, uh, and shapes. These are generated without any human intervention. Um, so we also have a view AR. This stands for uh, adaptive rules. And as the tool is exposed to, to more data, the adaptive feature will detect uh, and alert the user to um, new anomalies, new patterns, new behaviors, and the user can either uh, validate them, resolve them, or dismiss them as, as false alerts. So next, we'll quickly touch on the performance. In the upper right-hand corner, uh, we can see the run stats. So we can see you know, the source, et cetera. In this case, this run took uh, just over a minute. Um, so what's not what's impressive is is really not that it took a minute to to profile the data, but what's most impressive is the all of the insights that we see in the tabs that are generated right within this minute. And if we add on the kind of four to five minute uh, setup time, uh, right? There's a wizard like configuration to get this set up the total end-to-end -end time is around six minutes. Um, so the real benefit, the takeaway is, it's fast to set up, it's fast to configure, it's fast to get, to get insights, whether that's ongoing or ad hoc analysis. So next, I wanna drill into the adaptive rule panel itself. Um, within this you know, minute runtime, the tool is able to uh, profile the data and generate uh, a number of different rules. So specifically on this data set, which was over 70 columns, you can imagine all the, the group buys and distincts and everything else, um, the tool generates over 230 data quality rules. So rather than going column by column, um, we point the tool and uh, expose it to the data to get calibrated. Now, bear in mind, right, some of these, as we're getting started within the first runs, they, they may appear inaccurate, but as the tool's exposed to more data, new variances, new limits, um, and through some you know, minor hum human validations, the tool's gonna become more fine-tuned as, as we go along. So now we'll drill into a, a specific example of one of these callouts, which we can see under the behavior panel. Uh, in this case, CC code, which I know stands for credit card code. But if you wanted to peek at the preview, we can get a sense of the descriptive stats uh, presented below. We can also uh, see some details about this callout. So it's, it's identifying the attribute, column, or field name. It's identifying the metric type. So this would be a null ratio or a null metric. And then we can see the stats about the level of change uh, compared to its normalcy. So when you're troubleshooting these, you know these are getting called out out of the 230 rules uh, that were put in place. And these are the most significant or impactful. So I can drill into the details panel to maybe get a little more information to help me troubleshoot what's going on. Uh, within this panel, we can see the historical comparison between the previous uh, set of profiles. This is our baseline and the last run, the most recent scan on the right. So I can see the representation of JCB relative to the distribution of null in the most recent scan. And that lines up roughly with the null ratio series. This is the metric series where this column's never been null. It's never had nulls. Yet today, it's almost 50% null. So this lines up almost identically. It really helps us get to the bottom uh, of the root cause uh, pretty quickly. 
Now, here is where an analyst or an end 